If you'd like to learn how to make one of the most celebrated drinks in all of Mexico, then stay tuned because today we're going to be learning how to make horchata. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna to be making one of my favorite drinks of all time. And of course, as you already guessed it, that drink is horchata. For those of you that don't know what horchata is, it's a creamy rice drink that's famous in Mexico, and it's loaded with all the rich flavors of baking spice. While the drink and its many permutations are popular throughout the Americas, the version that we're gonna be making today is the Mexican version, and it's based on an original family recipe that my mother brought with her when she immigrated from Sonora to the United States back in the 1960s. This version is not only really very traditional in Mexico, but it's also extremely easy to make. And honestly, I'm guessing that you probably already have all the ingredients in your kitchen. And not only that, but it's also extremely inexpensive to make. So it's quite easy on the budget if you're entertaining for large groups of people. But I know that some of you out there might be asking, Eric, why are you gonna teach us how to make horchata when I can just buy a jug of it at Walmart? And you know what? You could actually totally do that if that's what you wanted to do. But if we're gonna be completely honest, I have never been remotely impressed by any of the brands that I've tried that were store-bought. Because once you've had the real thing, they all come across as flat and completely one-dimensional in flavor. Now today, most people associate Mexican horchata with taquerias and other places that sell agua frescas. But the history of the drink actually goes way further back, thousands of years back to the old world. In fact, many historians believe that the drink traces back all the way to Northern Africa in 2500 BC. So no matter what you see in print, what you read about in the food magazines, this is not a new, hip, and trendy drink. It goes way back, like way back. And it's the deliciousness and versatility of this drink is why it survived the ages and has traveled around the entire globe. And though the drink traces its roots to Africa, the beverage was eventually introduced to the Spanish who dubbed it horchata de chufa and made it with dehydrated tiger nuts. And for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> Spanish imperialism, the drink, of course, made its way to Mexico and the rest of Latin America. And in time, the tiger nuts were eventually replaced with white rice, which was much less expensive and easier to source as well. Now, when we're exploring this drink and discussing it, it's important to know that when the drink was first becoming popular in Latin America, Mexico City was an epicenter for international trade, which involved spices and flavors from around the world. Maybe you've heard of some of them, chocolate, vanilla, chili peppers. But the reason why I mention this is because so much of the traditional flavor of Mexican horchata comes from the use of true Ceylon cinnamon, which in Mexico is referred to by its Spanish name, canela. You see, most of the cinnamon flavor that we use here in the States is associated with a really big and aggressive cinnamon bite. For reference, think something along the lines of big red chewing gum. However, when you're making horchata, you wanna use canela, or as I mentioned by its other name, Ceylon cinnamon, because it has a much more subtle and nuanced flavor. You can normally recognize it by its looser coils and its less brittle skin. And of course, it's more subtle aroma. Now don't get me wrong, cassia cinnamon can work well in a pinch, but if you really want to recreate that flavor of Mexico, then you want to go with the Ceylon. If you have trouble finding it, you could always buy it online, but if you want to get it much cheaper, just buy it at your local Latin market. But anyways, enough of me chit chatting let's make a big pitcher to enjoy. But before I start making it, I wanna let you know that the version that we're making today is very traditional, very austere, without a lot of bells and whistles. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want all of you out there to get familiar with the very classic version of it. That way, if you do decide to riff it, you're building off of a solid foundation. But once you get this one down and you're really happy with the flavor, that's when you start tweaking it. That's when you start messing around with the flavors and maybe incorporating other flavors that you enjoy. So let's make one. First, we're gonna get a blender and add four and a half cups of water. Next, we're going to add one and a third cups of white rice. Lastly, before we blend it, we're going to be adding one stick of canela. Now, I'm going to put a lid on this and blend this bad boy up for about a minute. Now already, even though we haven't added any other ingredients, the smell is already reminiscent of the flavors that we all know of horchata. I swear, just by putting my face in here, it smells like I'm in a taqueria. It's amazing. Now to let the flavor steep, I'm gonna go ahead and pour all of this into a container and let it stand at room temperature for four hours. 
Now that it's been four hours, I'm gonna remove the lid. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir to bring everything to solution before I pour it all through a strainer into a pitcher. If you really wanna be efficient, you can put the rice in the strainer and then press it all out. So if you don't have a strainer, a cheesecloth works even better. Next, we're gonna add one cup of whole milk. Next, we're gonna follow that up with a quarter teaspoon of a high quality vanilla extract, as well as a quarter cup of brown sugar and a half cup of white granulated sugar. Now we're gonna go ahead and stir that up so that all the sugar dissolves and goes into solution. And there you have it folks, a pitcher of authentic Mexican horchata. However, although this is finished, before you serve it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you toss in the fridge for a little bit so it gets nice and chilled. And once you're done with that, all you have to do is pour over ice and enjoy. Cheers. This just tastes like my youth. This tastes like visiting family in like Baja, family in Mexicali. It's just absolutely delicious. A glass of well-made horchata is divine. A drink that has traveled around the world over thousands of years, specifically to bring joy to people around the world. And although I really want to wrap it up right there, I know that some of you booze hounds out there don't want to just drink this on its own. You want to add some alcohol to it. For those of you out there that are gonna do that, I'd recommend mixing it with your favorite Amaro, Cognac, or Aged Spirit, such as an Anejo Tequila. The flavors that it pairs with are incredibly versatile, so go ahead and have fun with it. However, don't overthink it, because at the end of the day, this drink sips perfectly just on its own all year round. So there you have it, folks. The recipe and a little bit of history of authentic Mexican horchata. And now that we're wrapping up, are there any other non-alcoholic beverages from around the world that you'd like us to explore in an episode of Cocktail Limelight? If so, leave in the comments down below, and who knows, maybe it'll be featured in a future episode of Cocktail Limelight. And with that said, if you'd like to dive deeper into the world of craft cocktails, be sure to check out the Bartender Large podcast that I host on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else where quality podcasts are found. And also, don't forget to mutter that like and subscribe button. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you again next week.